Now it's time to start putting all the details into our candy claw machine to make it look more like the real thing. Hey everyone, Chris here, and I know it has been a long haul with a candy claw machine build. But today we're going to put all of the acrylic on to get all the windows going, all of the trim. We're going to add the electronics to the acrylic so that we can mount it up. And then after this video, all we should have left is doing the firmware configuration. So hopefully this goes smooth. I'm going to continue to walk you through this step by step. And we're going to be one step closer to finishing our project. So let's get into it. Now, one of the most important parts of today's video is going to be these acrylic sheets. Now, these sheets were sponsored by Printed Solid. They sent them to me free of charge for this build. And that is much appreciated because this can be one of the most expensive parts of building one of these machines. Now, Printed Solid does have a form you can fill out where they will custom cut these panels for you. You just have to provide the dimensions. Now, these are three millimeter thick. They're 478 millimeters wide and 600 millimeters in length. There are four of them for the windows all around the machine. There's also a smaller piece that you can use. It's 55 millimeters tall, 300 millimeters wide. You can put this in the top bar. You can put your logo on it, whatever you'd like to do, but it just gives it a little more finished look and it lets all the LED light through. Now we're going to go ahead and install these. You can put whatever logos you want on them. You probably want to do that ahead of time so you don't scratch them. But one really important thing about acrylic is if you have to drill holes. And we do have to mount our PSU and our main board on the acrylic. So we're going to have to be very careful, drill our mounting holes, and get everything placed correctly. So that's what we're going to jump into first. Then we'll work around getting all the rest of the trim items set up. So let's just start by taking a look at this piece right here. There's a little bit of information that you need. So the top part is actually cut off just a bit. So there'll be a gap all the way around the top on the candy machine. My idea was all of the rollers will clear that if it's cut off a bit, as well as you can put that top bar in there to fill in the gap. Now in future versions, I might do something just a little bit different, but that gap will remain in case we want to put trim around it or whatever it might be. So that being said, the distance between the hole and the bottom is different than the distance from this hole in the top. All of these holes are the same distance apart from each other. But on the bottom, you're about 75 millimeters away from the center of that hole. And then on the top, you're about 74 or 73 and some change. But make sure you know that this will be in all the files that I have on GitHub, all the different placements. These are 5.5 millimeter holes if you happen to want to get these cut, or you can drill them by hand. If you do want to drill them by hand, here is your corner piece. This will help you line up where to drill those holes. On the first version, all I did was clamp on my acrylic onto the frame, then clamp this on right behind it, and use my drill bit to cut my five and a half millimeter holes. So, whichever way you want to go, both will work, but just know that there is a difference when they cut these sheets. So the next things we're going to be concerned with is mounting our main board. This is my ramps case. You're not going to necessarily use ramps. These are the mounting holes for an Arduino Mega. But you can just use this as your jig to drill your holes. You don't need very many. In fact, I'll probably only put three in it. But select where you want that board to go. Remember where our wires come out. They come out in the top left of the back of the machine. So if this was the sheet, for the left side, you'd want your board mounted over here. And I suggest doing some sort of larger hole to allow some of the larger cables through. We will have to run an LCD cable through here. That's a 10 pin plug. So plan for that. We'll see more of that in a moment. But again, I want my case to be somewhere up in this neighborhood. And then the same way for your PSU. If you're using the same PSU I am, there's three holes on the back. You can use a couple of those to mount it to your acrylic. I have even created a jig, so you can use this to drill your holes. But before we start this, again, it's important to remember there is a top and a bottom. This is the top corner where we want to mount things. And I am no pro at drilling holes in acrylic. All I know is you need to go really slow because you do have the possibility of cracking it. 
So I'm just going to use my hand drill, prop my acrylic up so it doesn't flex while I'm cutting it. And then I'm going to use my case to mark my holes and then go ahead and drill it through. I'm going to drill it at three and a half millimeter. Just be very, very careful. This would be a horrible time to crack your acrylic while you're finishing up your project. So here's how we did. Again, we have some three and a half millimeter holes. I just used a regular bit. I used our case and our PSU jig to drill those holes. We'll just attach it on the side here on the acrylic. We'll just run some screws through. And then I have one 20 millimeter hole so that I can get those LCD cables through. I just went super, super slow with my step down bit. Hopefully we didn't crack anything. Let's go ahead and take a quick peek just to make sure. We look like we're in good shape. So I was pretty nervous about that, but holes completed successfully. And that 20 millimeter should be big enough to get our LCD screen cable through. Good to go. Now that we've got our holes drilled in our acrylic, let's go ahead and move back to the top bar because this will have to go on before we put our acrylic in. I just wanted to get that step out of the way. Now your Candy Glow machine has a regular 3D printer screen on it. This is a 2004 RepRap discount display like that has been on printers forever. You don't actually need it. It is kind of cool to be able to see what the machine's doing. We have put some commands in there so it tells you what to do during the machine's process. But there's no need to get in there and adjust anything in the menus. The reset button is kind of handy once in a while. But I like having it just so that it shows it is completely running Marlin out of the box. So we're going to go ahead and put it in the top bar. Now I have some 3D printed spacers that we'll use for this. We're going to use four M3 by 20 millimeter screws and some M3 nylock nuts. So we can just put our 20 millimeter screws through the front of our top bar and then we'll put our spacers on there. Then you also do have a reset button, a 3D printed part that will set here in the front, just like that. And then your screen can go on. And then we can go around and slide on our nylock nuts. This doesn't have to be tight at all. Just make sure it's not so tight that it's pushing that reset button. That could be a bit of a surprise. And there we go. It's ready for whatever fancy knob you'd like to put on there. Now I mentioned before I did have them cut an acrylic piece. It does fit in here like this. I highly recommend if you're going to put any kind of vinyl or any logos on there that you do it before you glue it in. But I did just intend for you to glue that in there. It does just fit over that space. So get it prepped, whatever you'd like in there, and then go ahead and glue it in. And from the last video, we're ready to go ahead and put that top bar on. Now we have our lights hanging right here. I suggest you go ahead and thread those through this section right here before you install it. It's just much easier that way. So just feed it through each one of these blocks. There is a hole in them. And then your LEDs are in. Then I already put four T-nuts underneath here. It just has four holes in it. You can line it right up. And then put your four M5 by 10 millimeter screws into the T-nuts. You want to put this on first because the glass is going to line up underneath it. You just want to make sure that glass is going to clear. So you want this on there. And if you find those tens are too long, you could go down to eights. You could also rework this part if you really wanted to. But just one washer might not be too bad because it is holding it on. There's a little bit of gravity there. It shouldn't have much weight to it, but that washer should really help you out. With that in place, you should be able to go ahead and test fit your acrylic before you take the plastic off. Remember, again, I know we just talked about it, but there is a top and bottom. It should just fit in the groove down here and then have plenty of clearance to fit right underneath your top bar. And it fits. So now I'm confident we can go ahead, take the paper off, and then we can go ahead and put on the front two corner pieces. Each corner piece is going to take M5 by 20 millimeter bolts. Each piece takes eight as well as eight T-nuts for a total of 32 all around the machine. So I'm just going to use the corner piece to help line up the T-nuts because it's easier than using the plastic. You don't want to have to deal with that plastic any more than you have to. And just a side tip, you want to make sure you line up the front ones and the side ones because this goes on all as one piece. 
And when you're lining these up, make sure the bottom of your corner piece is setting on the corner of your base piece. That's how they were designed. So that's where the holes are going to line up with the plastic. You do have the ability to raise them up a bit on the front too, because they go up into the top piece. Just make sure it's flush down there when you're lining up those T-nuts. Then once all your T-nuts are lined up, we're ready to go ahead and put on the acrylic. See if I can get the ultimate amount of fingerprints on it. Now it's gonna be about a millimeter shorter than the frame on both sides. That's just to allow it to fit, give you a little bit of wiggle room, but all the holes should line up directly in the center of your extrusion. Then you can put your corners on. There will be blank corners on the GitHub. I just put some text on mine, but you'll be able to edit yours however you wish. And your M5 20 millimeter should fit right in there. No need to get them too snug. You don't want to break your acrylic. So we got the front on. Front looks good. The hardest part about this whole thing are the quality of the T-nuts that you get. They're the roll-in type. Some of them don't stick so well, so they like to fall down. It's hard to line them up. I'll leave a link to the one I use, but I still run into one every once in a while that's kind of a pain. But the front two are on. Glass looks good. Now let's move to the right side. We'll put that one on, but the left one has electronics on it. So we're going to want to do that just a little bit differently. We still have to put it on, but we'll get to that next. So here's the side panel. The only thing different on the sides is you have to put these in here and then slide them into that existing piece. Make sure your T-nuts are on this side. It's not hard. I just wanted to make sure you knew that that's how this was going to go. So same way it fits into the bottom tray. Just slide it in underneath the existing corner. That one's on. You can go ahead and put your corner on. Just make sure you have your T-nuts lined up on the back one. The back one, I usually just slide it in. I don't put the screws in. You can if you want to, but it's to the back of the machine. Nobody can see it. But that's a great way to get in there and work on things or add your candy, move your stuff around in here. It's kind of an access door. That's one of the things that I would like to do before we do the next iteration of this machine. Maybe have a hinge door back there. So the back one, I'm not so much concerned about. So we'll go ahead and put that corner on. There's one side panel on. It's lining up pretty good. These are pretty difficult actually to line up with those T-nuts. Hammer style would probably be better like for the back corners, but just do what you can. I would like to come up with a method that was just a little bit easier. Stay tuned for that one. But it's on, let's move to the other side. Now on this side, we have a little bit of wiring to finish up before we put our panel on. We're gonna add our LCD cables. Go ahead and do yourself a favor and mark these one and two on both ends. These are a little longer set of cables because we have quite a ways to go. Shouldn't matter too much, but we'll go ahead and plug them into our screen, EXP1 and 2. And then we want to route the cables down underneath this extrusion. We have to keep it away from the rollers, remember. But we've got these 3D printed clips. These are from the Bear Bill, the Prusa Bear. And they'll just twist into that extrusion. I printed about five or six, and then we can run that cable on back. All the clips are on, then just feed your ribbon cable through there. That'll keep it out of the way. And then this will go out that side panel where we drilled that 20 millimeter hole. Now we can go ahead and load and line up our T-nuts, our final set of eight in this rear extrusion. Then we can go ahead and slide in our other side piece. And we can go ahead and put our corner on with some more M5 by 20 millimeter bolts. Remember, make sure you have your back T-nuts lined up before you put that corner on. And our panel's on. Now, this is the important one because we have to mount some stuff here. So we've got our larger hole. We can go ahead and pull our LCD cables through. And you can go ahead and pull all the wires for our controller cable through there as well. And the ones for our light strips. You can go ahead and mount your PSU down here. I do have a case to cover the wires, but you can put that on after we get this done. It's got a spot for a receptacle and a switch. We'll talk about that later. You can go ahead and put it on and that case will go on a little later. You should be able to get by with some M3 by 10 millimeters to attach this if you're using the same PSU that I am. Now with your ramp sandwich here, it's probably been a long time since a few of us have used one of these, we're just gonna use M3 by 20 millimeter screws, but you don't ever wanna mount one of these with just a bare screw. You wanna put a nylon washer on it. 
These screws can easily damage the PCB surface and that's going to cause you all kinds of problems. So I'm just going to go with the two that are easy to put in with the M3 screw head. One there, one there, and then one over here in the corner. Just like that. And so the case that I have for ramps, it's going to actually mount the case with the board screws. So the Mega will fit right in here. The screws will go through and then the whole thing will go onto the acrylic. And then I'm going to use three M3 nylock nuts on the back just to make sure it stays put while in operation. Our Mega and case are ready to go. Then you can go ahead and put on your ramp shield and then we'll be ready to start running wires to it. We don't have to put the cover on quite yet, but at least we know where all the wires are going to be. We know the location and how long they need to be to get there. And there's no need to put the back on quite yet because we're going to work out of the back to finish up our build. So we're starting to get somewhere here. It's starting to look like a candy claw machine, but we do have a little bit more work to go. Now, the next video, we're going to get things buttoned up. We still have to put our end stops on and we have to get everything wired. So get ready to do a lot of crimp connections. And we also have to do the firmware. Now, I'm going to have a firmware that you can use. So you don't necessarily have to compile your own. I'll just give you the file. But I am going to walk you through all the things I did to make this thing work. So you can customize it if you want. Also, a note on the larger printed pieces. Now, you don't necessarily have to have a large printer to be able to build this. I'm going to do my best to slice all of these up so you can print them in two sections and glue them together. So you should still be able to use your 300 by 300 3D printer to get all of this done. I was just using what I had and the FT6 was available. So that's it for today. I'll see you really soon on the next one.